protecting planet Earth. Whoa! Look at those windsurfers go! Oh, yeah! They're zooming along! <laughs> oh, you humans are so lucky to have the ocean to play in. Hmm. Uh, what's that down there? Oh, dear. That's plastic rubbish, Zoom. A lot of plastic ends up in the oceans, especially single-use plastic. Hmm. Well, then, I don't think I like single-use plastic. Curiosity? Yes, Captain Zoom. Let's find out about single-use plastic. Single-use plastic is plastic that's only used once. Such as drink bottles, shampoo bottles, plastic bags, plastic straws. So many things are wrapped in plastic, used just one time, and then thrown away. plastic rubbish just disappear after a while? Unfortunately not, Zoom. Let me show you. Most plastic is made from oil. That makes it strong, light, easy to turn into any shape, and long-lasting. So when plastic was invented, humans must have thought it was a brilliant idea. We did, Zoom, but now its long-lastingness has become a big problem. Ugh. Because after we're finished with plastic, it doesn't disappear. It just breaks down into smaller and smaller bits, called microplastics. So when people throw plastic away, it doesn't really go away? Unfortunately not, Zoom. Hmm. Here's a fact for you. It can take a plastic bottle 450 years to break down. Oh, 450 years? Oh, that's hard to imagine. Well then, let's ask for help. Hmm. Curiosity, search for some curious young humans, please. Certainly, Captain Zoo. <laughs> Located curious young humans, Maya. And Julia. Okay, Curiosity Crew, let's get going. Where are we? It's Maya and Julia's school. Look, it's a spaceship. Oh, yeah, it's a spaceship. <laughs> Hi, Maya. Hi, Julia. Hi, Zoom. Can you help us, please? Can you show Zoom how long it takes for different things to break down? Yes, yes we, we can. Let's find out. This experiment needs a banana skin, a piece of cucumber, a plastic cap, some soil, and a see-through tank. So what is the experiment? We're going to see what happens when we bury some plastic and some food underground. <laughs> We're going to bury that. Looks like they're burying the cucumber first. Oh, layers of the soil. In goes the soil. Right. Uh, now the banana. Oh, we're gonna cover it. Um, and finally the plastic. Cover your hand. Right and on goes the lid. Taking it somewhere safe where they can leave it for a few days. A, a few days? That's ages. You can't rush nature, Zoom. Hmm. Okay, Julia. Let's see what happened. Take this off. <gasps> this is exciting. First, the cucumber. It's like wet. It's important to wear gloves if you're handling old food. Cucumber got munched on by teeny tiny creatures in the soil called microorganisms until it almost disappeared. But what about the banana peel? It almost disappeared as well. Yes, microorganisms love to break down most foods. Wow. And now let's do the plastic. 
Okay. Look, it's exactly the same. same. That's because microorganisms aren't very good at breaking down plastic. So the banana and the cucumber broke down, but the plastic stayed the same. <laughs> now I can see why humans need to stop throwing plastic away, especially single-use plastic. Great experiment, Maya and Julia. See you around. Bye, Zoom. Let's find out. Today I asked all about plastics. The ones we use just once can make the planet sick. Hey, somebody got a present. <laughs> yeah, Mark bought me a reusable water bottle so I can use it again and again and again. <sighs> the only problem is it came in a lot of plastic packaging. <laughs> but this is a new kind of plastic zoom. Watch. <laughs> it's disappearing. How did that happen? It's made from cornstarch, so it breaks down easily. Since humans found out that single-use plastic made from oil is harming our planet, scientists have been inventing plastic made from plants, vegetables, even seaweed. They're called bioplastics. Bioplastics sound fantastic! <laughs> what else could you make plastic from? Uh, milk! <laughs> milk! <laughs> really? Well, let's, let's find, find out. out! Right, Zoom, what colours do you want your plastic to be? Uh, oh, can we have green, please? Just like me? Absolutely! Got it. <laughs> and blue. All right. Now we add vinegar and give it a stir. <laughs> the milk is going all lumpy. <laughs> Those lumps are called curds. And now we're going to pour our milk through a sieve. All the curds are staying in the sieve. The curds are what we're going to make our plastic from. Let's use these molds to make an X's and O's game. Here you go, Mark. Now we press the plastic into the molds. Good pressing, guys. <laughs> now we just need to wait a few hours until it sets. Oh, right. Well, I'm gonna go for a nap. Ready? Should be. We're just taking the pieces out. Oh, this is exciting! <laughs> <laughs> and there they are. X's and O's and a board to play on, all made from milk plastic. Yeah. Right, let the games begin. Me and Amy versus Mark. Bring it on. Stay protected all by itself. Hey Zoom, would you like to go on a trip and watch some people shopping without plastic? Plastic free shopping? Yes, please. Curiosity, set course for a plastic free shopping trip. Setting course for a plastic free shopping trip. Okay, Curiosity, let's zoom around. <laughs> Zoom, we're all 
out of brain power. Oh, we can't go on our trip without that. Uh, oh, let's go back to Maya and Julia's school for help. Look, there they are. Hi, Zoom. Have you run out of brain power? Yes, we have. Would you be able to generate some more for us? Yes, yes we, we would. would. Well then, it's time for a brain power challenge. When the power runs out, it's, it's the brain power, power challenge. When we can't get a bow, it's, it's the brain power challenge. Put our helmets on, got our brains feeling strong. Get the power back on. Brain power challenge! challenge! Yeah! Hey everyone! Ready for a brain power challenge? Yeah! Maya, Julia, brain power helmet on, please. Okay, we need you to help us by answering some questions so we can generate enough brain power to get the curiosity moving again. Are we ready? Yeah. Yes. Okay, question one. Maya, plastic can take hundreds of years to do what? Is it break down, break dance, or break the ice? Break down. Yes, that's right! Yeah! And look, you're already making brain power. <laughs> Julia, let's see if you can get us enough so we can take Zoom to a place with far less plastic. Here's your question. What do we call plastics that we only use once? Is it single moose, single goose, or single use? Single use. That's the right answer! We've got enough brain power to get going again! Thanks, Maya. Thanks, Julia. Back to board, Mark. Bye, everyone! Bye, Mark! And remember, always stay curious. Right, Zoom, now it's time to go on our trip. Ha-ha! Okay, okay, curiosity, let's zoom around! Is there a plastic-free shop in this town? There sure is, Zoom. Also known as a zero-waste shop. Look, there it is. Hmm, I'm going in for a closer look. Oranges are such a lovely orangey colour. But what's that person putting them into? It's a reusable bag, Zoom. You can use it for lots of fruit and veg. I see apples, tomatoes, oh, and peppers. Oh, that's so clever. Oh, there really is no need for fruit and vegetables to be wrapped in single-use plastic. Mm -mm. Here's a fact for you, Zoom. Over half of the plastic produced each year is single-use plastic. Oh, that's way too much! And what's going on here? Well, Zoom, you don't have to buy your washing up liquid in a single-use plastic bottle when you can refill a glass jar. And look, they're pouring that rice into a bag. No plastic. What's going into that jar? Oh, wait, wait, it's coming! Oh, it's peanut butter, yum! In this shop, most of the things are in big containers, and you just fill up from them. Oh, think how good it would be for the planet, oh, and the creatures living on it, if you humans tried to give up single-use plastic. Mm. Refilling and reusing and giving up single-use plastic is what more humans need to do. Mm -hmm. But now, I think it's time we refilled ourselves. <gasps> is it tea time? It sure is. <laughs> okay, curiosity, let's zoom around. Now I know something you did some fun things with my curiosity crew. Captain my spaceship and flew to lots of places. Zooming around with Zoom. Today I Now 
they'll know what to do. Let's find out. Let's find out all aboard the curiosity. Let's find out all aboard and let's find out. Protecting planet Earth. They're geese, Zoom. Oh, and look how they're flying really close together. Oh, I wish I could do that. And look down there. Huh? Oh, <laughs> what kind of bird is that? It's an owl, Zoom, and we're very lucky to see it. Owls usually prefer to come out at night. Birds are amazing. Curiosity? Yes, Captain Zoom. Let's find out about birds. <laughs> There are over 15,000 different species of bird on planet Earth. Some birds are big. Some birds are small. Some birds prefer to come out at night. Like the great horned owl. Look in the tree, there's one. Some birds live high up in the mountains. Some birds like to swim in the sea. Some birds even like to take a bath, that's a lot of splashing. Well, let me show you. A bird is a bird if it has a beak, sometimes called a bill, two feet, two wings. And if it can fly. Actually, no, Zoom. Because some birds can't fly, like penguins. And some animals can fly, but they aren't birds. Like bats. Oh. <laughs> also, a bird is a bird if it has feathers and if it lays eggs. Amy, where do birds live? Well, lots of them build nests. Birds can build? Oh, I'd love to see how they do that. Well then, let's ask for help. Curiosity, search for some curious young humans, please. Certainly, Captain Zoom. Located curious young humans. Nama and Liliana. Okay, Curiosity Crew, let's get going. Where are we? It's Nama and Liliana's school. build their nests. Yes, we can. Let's find out. To show you how birds build their nests, Nama and Liliana need twigs, grass, mud, and moss. Ooh, this should be fun. <laughs> They're using these things to make a blackbird's nest. First, some twigs. Blackbirds build their nests in the branches of trees. Now they're twisting some grass around the twigs to make the nest stronger. Now we got the mud. Mud? What are they going to do with mud? Blackbirds use mud to hold their nests together, a bit like cement. Mud cement? Ooh, that's very clever. And finally, some nice soft moss so that the nest is comfy to sit in. Oh look, it's just like a real blackbird's nest. Birds build their nests so they have a safe place for their eggs and to raise their chicks. That's why they build them up high and they come in all shapes and sizes. This swallow's nest is made from clay. Swallow's nests can be found on the walls of houses or barns or even under bridges. And look, Nama and Liliana have built a swallow's nest too. So cool. Thanks Liliana and Nama, your nests are the best. Let's find out. That's a funny looking lunch. <laughs> it's not lunch, Zoom. It's showing you how birds have different beaks. Birds have different beaks? Yeah, they do. So they can eat the type of food available to them where they live. Woodpeckers look for food in trees. 
This is a woodpecker's beak. Flamingos go fishing with their beaks. This is a flamingo's beak. And hummingbirds have long beaks. This is a hummingbird's beak. Okay. And now uh, what are we doing with these bird beaks? We're going to eat some bird food. On the menu tonight, insects in the bark of a tree. Sea creatures swimming in water. And nectar inside a long flower. First up, the woodpecker's beak. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Not very good at eating the small creatures. Oh. <laughs> Not much good at drinking nectar either. <laughs> Perfect for eating insects. Just like a real woodpecker. They have long pointy beaks which are perfect for getting insects out of bark. Ah. Now Mark, you be the flamingo. Okay, let's go, go. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Just the insects, not the bark. <laughs> not so good at the nectar either. Just like a real flamingo. They use their beaks to gulp up food and water, then strain out the water so only the food is left behind. <laughs> now, do the hummingbird, Amy. Mm, not quite getting the insects there. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, no luck with the sea creatures either. The hummingbird is great at sucking up the nectar. Hummingbirds have long, narrow beaks with tongues shaped like straws. Perfect for sucking nectar out of plants. So birds' beaks are suited to the foods near them. Oh, they must be the cleverest creatures on planet Earth. Hey Zoom, did you know that some birds need our help? Hmm, they do? Mm. Why is that, Mark? Well, lots of the places birds like to live have been taken over by humans. So it's harder for birds to build nests and find food. Birds nest and feed in hedgerows, but humans have been cutting back hedgerows. And pollution can make them sick. <gasps> oh, poor birds. But. Help is at hand. Would you like to meet some people who look after birds called barn owls? <gasps> Will I get to meet an owl? I hope so. Well then, curiosity, set course for barn owls. Setting course for barn owls. Okay, curiosity, let's zoom around. <laughs> Zoom, we're all out of brain power. We can't go on a trip without that. <gasps> Let's go back to Nama and Liliana's school for help. Look, there they are. Hi, Zoom. Have you run out of brain power? Yes, we have. Would you be able to generate some more for us? Yes, we would. Well, then, it's time for a brain power challenge. When the power runs out, it's the Brain Power Challenge. When we can't get a bow, it's the Brain Power Challenge. Put our helmets on, got our brains feeling strong. Get the power back on Brain Power Challenge. Yeah! Hey, everyone. Hi! Well, Nama, Liliana, put your Brain Power helmets on, please. OK, we need you to help us by answering questions so we can generate enough brain power to get the curiosity going again. Are you ready? Yeah! All right, question one. Nama, birds need a good, strong nest to protect their what? Is it their legs, their eggs, or 
They're clothes pegs. They're eggs. Right answer! Yeah! yeah! And look, you're already making brain power. <laughs> Liliana, here is your question. What do birds use to strengthen their nests? Is it mud, spuds, or cotton buds? Mud. Yes, that's the right answer! <laughs> everyone Bye. and remember always stay curious right zoom now it's time to go on our trip Aha. okay curiosity let's zoom around arrived in barn owl location Whoa. Now, I wonder where those barn owls could be. Barn owls can be hard to find, Zoom. Mm. <gasps> oh, these guys might know. Hello. Hello there. Hi. Uh, do you know where we might find some barn owls? Sure, we're actually just about to check on some. Would you like to follow? Would we? Zoom. See that box up there? Oh, I do. Oh, is that where the baby owls live? It sure is. That's a nest box, and it was put up by a kind farmer so the owls could make a nest inside. Years ago, there were lots of barn owls, happily catching their favourite food, mice and shrews. But then, things got tough for the owls. Many of the old barns where they made their nests were knocked down and lots of the hedgerows where mice and shrews live were cut. Nowhere to live and not enough food. Oh, they really do need help. Look, Mark. Alan is going up to the nest box. Mm. But I, I thought humans weren't supposed to touch birds' nests. It's okay, Zoom. Looking after barn owls is part of Alan's job, so he's allowed to go near the nest. But other humans aren't. Yeah. And he's going to put it in a special carry bag so he can bring it down here safely. Look how gentle he is. Oh. <gasps> Hi, baby owl. You're so cute. <gasps> so what are Alan and James doing? They're going to put a ring on its leg. The ring has a special code on it that matches the information they're writing down about the chick. Like, whether it's male or female, what year it was born, and that it was born in that nest right up there. <gasps> Look, it fits perfectly. It certainly does. You know, Zoom, when the baby barn owls are growing in their nest, their parents bring them food. But it must be hard for their mum and dad if they can't find the food they need in the hedgerows. It is hard, Zoom. But the good news is that people are starting to understand how important hedgerows are. So they're taking better care of them and they're planting new ones. And ringing the owls like this is a great way to see if all that help is actually working. You see, if a chick like this flies away and it's found, people like Alan and James can find out more about it from its ring. Are what humans doing to help the barn owls working? It is indeed. Barn owl numbers are going back up. Oh, well done, humans. Your help is making a difference. Uh, Mark, do you think I should put a ring on my leg in case I get lost? Just stay in my backpack, Zoom, and you'll be grand. Right, I think it's time for us to fly. See you guys. Bye, baby chicks. I can't believe you got to meet a barn owl, Zoom. You are so lucky. Yeah, <laughs> and if I meet them again, I'll know who they are. Okay, Curiosity, let's zoom around. Now I know something you did some fun things with my Curiosity crew. Captain, my spaceship, I'm flew to lots of 
Some help. 